All right, so in the last video, we basically redesigned some of the pages. And one thing I kind of keep forgetting is that my webcam blocks the top right of my screen. So I should probably do this so you all can actually see the app and like the buttons that are up here. Um, but one thing that we kind of want to do is when you make a new build order, there's different styles of builds that you can do, right? So when I submit a new build order, one of the styles you can do is an all in basically like if you do this build, it's either you're going to win or you're probably going to lose because you don't have enough economy to make the game last long enough. So it's called an all in. There's also cheese where you kind of do something that's like not expected, catch your opponents off guard. Usually if you don't succeed with the cheese, you lose as well. Um, and then there's macro builds, which are basically just like, don't do anything out of the ordinary. Just try to drone up, get as much economy as possible, build a huge army and attack. I, I believe there's some other stuff as well. So maybe we should add, let's, let's redesign this page a little bit and we're going to focus on that. So let's go to flow Byte again, and I'm going to try to find some components to make this look a little bit nicer and also figure out why this is like locked in. Uh, like I can't expand this at all. Um, Anyway, let's just go here. I'm going to type in like inputs. Let's see if they have some good styles for inputs. <clears throat> Our selects. So the first thing we have here is a select where we select the matchup. And we could probably do some better like UX, kind of like we did on the other page for finding a matchup. But we'll just keep it as a drop down for right now. And we are going to go ahead and just copy. This looks okay. Let's just go ahead and copy this one. And we are going to start replacing the submit page with some better styles that hopefully make this look a little nicer. So the first thing right here was a select and I styled it like this. Let's just paste in this select and I'm gonna go ahead and copy in this class here like this, put this on the label and I'll rename this the class name. And then for here, I'm gonna copy this and we're gonna put that all here as well in the select delete some extra stuff. And then there's no styles attached to the options. Um, it looks like I should probably add like a selected to the first value, which is ZVT potentially. Well, I guess we're using React, so it's going to select the one that we already have. And let's just see how this looks. So going back to our app, this already looks a little bit better, right? It looks a little bit cleaner. It's a nicer dropdown. And there is quite a bit of space between these two things. I think it's because I have a gap that's in between everything. So what we could potentially do is I don't want the gap to apply to like in between these elements. So I think there's something called a field set. I don't know if this is the proper use case for it. Some people use like a div with like a form group or something just so that there's not so much space between the label and the actual like drop down. And we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to add a label to the text area like that. We could probably make the, the class over here be consistent with the text area as well. So I'll just go ahead and paste that in. And then we are going to go ahead and call this build order. And I'll put HTML4 build like that. And I'll add an ID of build on the text area itself. Okay, does this look a little bit better? Um, it does, but I forgot to add the field set. I don't think I'm I have to go Google what the field set's used for. I'll say like semantic HTML proper use for field set. I think these are typically used for like options and stuff. I found it useful to group related sets of data when you have multiple tables on a page. Field bit in the name field set refers to form fields. Using field set outside of form groups, arbitrary data. Okay, yeah, so you're supposed to use it inside of a form. It's about form control groups. By grouping related form controls, authors can divide a form into smaller, more manageable parts. So I, I think technically this might be proper. Um, you know, I don't know. I have to ask someone on my Discord who's much better at semantic HTML what his thoughts are. But I wanted to kind of make this as a grouping for like, okay, this label and this select, it should be grouped together semantically. Anyway, this page already looks a little bit better. Now the button, let's go see if there's some existing buttons here. And let's just go ahead and like use the default blue button here. Do we want rounded? Do we want square? I kind of like the squared ones a little bit better, honestly. So let's go find the button here. I'll just go ahead and do that. 
and I will just rename this a class name and I'm going to go ahead and rename this to submit <clears throat> like that. Um, I want to figure out a way to make this wider. I don't know why this build order is so like narrow. I don't know if there's some like width that's somewhere. If I were to end this label, if I say W full for the class name, does that make it? Yeah, it doesn't work. Okay, so now it's the hard part of CSS is like why do sometimes the styles not do? So if you look at main, this main is the full width of the page. H1 doesn't seem like it's getting the full width. I think by default, like I'd have to give this a block. Like I have to give the form a block. Let's go to the form here. I'm going to try giving a block and see what happens. No, not going to do anything. Hmm. Let me just try doing a width of full, maybe. Okay. So I think, okay, what is, what is the default display for a form in CSS? The block? The default display value for most elements is either block or inline. What is the default width or form in CSS? You know what? I'll look at this stuff later. I don't know why. Like, I guess Tailwind has a way to like not have stuff automatically take up the full width of the page. Like, typically, when you make a form, it's going to take up the full width, I believe. But for some reason, Tailwind does not do that. So I want to make this a full width so that the I can get the most real estate for this text area. But then on the field set itself, like I should probably give this a fixed width of, I'll just give it like 40 or something, something smaller. And then we could probably also give this one like a width of, I don't know, is there like a 96? 96 might be too big. By right, six. 64. And get rid of the W full down there. Refresh the page. Why is that not uh, working? Block. Oh, because I'm doing it on the wrong thing. I'm a dumbo. Uh, let's just go ahead and go back to here where I added block and W full. I don't want to do that. I actually want to give this like a width of, is there like a percentage I could do? Maybe like two thirds, two fourths. There we go. And at this point, I don't know if I'm making this any better. It kind of, I kind of liked how it was centered. So I might go back to some of these field sets and I'm gonna give this a, a, a line. I think it's like justify content, justify center. No? Now I'm just playing around and guessing at stuff at this point. All right, field set, display, I'll say flex, justify, center. No. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to make this thing, this whole field set, I want this thing to be centered inside of the form. Now, why is it not centering inside of the form? Uh, because for some reason, I'm adding stuff I'm constantly adding stuff to the wrong stuff. <laughs> Let's go back. Let's take a step back. This needs to be flex, flex column, justify, center. And then I'm gonna make this W full. And this should have taken the field set, which has a width, and it should have centered it. Now, I don't know, maybe I need to give this like a margin of auto. You say M auto as well, which, Probably will work better. Yeah, I don't know why it's not working. Like, I, do I need to just change the display to inline here? Like, like this should have worked because this thing is a flex box, flex column. Maybe it's a line center, item center.
<clears throat> okay, maybe that's what it was. Um, going back, let's just go ahead and collapse this, and then over here we're going to look at the other field set, which I'll give it a class name of width of three fourths, and see what happens there. Okay, this one, gonna get rid of that three fourths. I'm gonna say W full, and I might give this a default height of. I think it's like 96. Is that big enough? Still kind of small. I think I should. I might need to make something custom. So I think in Tailwind, you can actually say like this. I could say like 400 pixels. Yeah. So I just, I'm like refresh my memory sometimes about like the proper way to do some Tailwind stylings. But this page looks a little bit nicer, I would say. Um, the build order should probably be required. I don't know why it's not. Why is it not submitting to? On submit. There's a button down here. It had type button on it for some reason. I got to get rid of that. Okay, so anyway, what I was originally going to do before I got carried away, carried away with like making the styling look a little bit better and wasting a bunch of time is I wanted the ability to people for people to put the style of gameplay, right? So instead of I'm going to add another one here, another drop down. I'm going to call this one style. And then the style, uh, let's just go ahead and change some stuff here. Change the ID to make it match the label. And the style itself, I'm going to go ahead and make a new state variable up here called style. And set style. And this could just default to like cheese. Okay, I want all my StarCraft players who are using the site to basically cheese everything. And over here for the field set for style, I'm gonna I'm gonna change this to style. I'm gonna say set style, and and then for the options, we can say cheese. We could say all in. We could say macro. And let's just go to a StarCraft II build order. I think there's some other categories. Like I don't want to copy the site exactly, but there's timing attack, economic, and co-op. I'm not even going to do co-op. I don't know what that means. I guess if you're playing like two-player games. Um, but timing attack is a good one. Timing attack. Timing attack, all right. Jeez, all in. Econ economic. I'm going to call it macro. I like the word macro better. Um, let's go back to our style. Okay, so you can select if you want macro, you can select timing attack or whatever. You can import your build order. And the back end doesn't accept this, right? Like we were adding stuff to the front end, but we didn't modify the back end to actually work with this. Let's go to that create build router and we're going to add a style here like this so that we can actually send the data to the back end and again when we try to create the build order here we need to make sure that we set style onside the prisma object so i'm gonna go ahead and just load up prisma schema and then we're going to add a style here like so and then we're going to go ahead and rerun prisma migrate so i'll say run migrate that should generate a migration um Step zero, added the required column style to the build order table without the default value. Okay, so sometimes if you add new fields to your database, you have to default them. So I'm going to go ahead and say add default. And we can give this a default of cheese right now, I guess. I'll rerun that migrate command and hopefully it will allow us to do it. So adding a build style to the database. And I spelled database wrong, but it's fine. Okay, so one thing that I was kind of worried about is that when I added style here to input, this thing didn't complain. And I was passing more information to data than like this thing would even really know about. So I kind of wonder if I should instead like make this more explicit like this. It's a little bit more verbose, but I feel like it would have complained. Like TypeScript would have said like, hey, you didn't do something proper. So now if I were to add something else, it complains, right? So instead of doing the spread operator, it I'd rather do this because it actually feels like it's a better approach. 
Um, and then I'm going to restart my server real quick. So npm run dev. Like that. And now we should be able to persist the style to the back end. So I'll just go ahead and submit this. And it crashes for some reason. Why does it crash? Uh, I don't know. Well, it looks like this file has some red in it. So obviously we need we need to pass style here. So let's go ahead and make sure we pass style there so that our front end is properly sending the right data over to the back end. Let's try it again. I'll type some information, click submit. There we have it. So if we go back, I don't even know what build that was. I'll submit a new one. We'll do PVP. We'll do macro. Click submit. Find a build. PVP. And we have the one we just added. So I'm also going to add the style to the table. Let's go to the matchup screen. I think it's like here. And we have a table that we can kind of print out the style. Like this. And that should be pretty good. So instead of having a table here, it, it might be good to like, I kind of like using cards for everything. I don't know why. Maybe there's a different approach that we could do. If you look at some examples, they have like a table here um, without any headers. There's a bunch of like rows that you can kind of click through, which might be fine as well. I just find this very, very, it's a, it's really noisy. It's hard to see, honestly, but maybe if we use some type of card or let's look through here and see what other type of components we have access to that might be able to do something similar. I mean, like, let's look at the tables real quick and see if they're even styled that nicely. So they look okay. Um, you know, card doesn't even show up there. I don't see card on the left. Let me go back. Card, does that pop up? It doesn't. So let's go over to Flowbyte. I think they have like something called blocks. And this will have like cards and other stuff as well. Let's type in card here and see like what do we get. Oh, here's some components. So we have cards. I just missed it for some reason. Um, trying to think, do we actually really want to display an image on the card? We might want to. I know this page, they display... I don't know why they even have this Protoss thing. Oh, PVT. So Proto Protoss versus Aaron. Like, what does this column even mean? Is this like the unit that you plan to like just mass... I don't know. I'm just never a big fan of tables. I feel like it's really hard to get the information that you need at a glance because you have to like parse through all this information. So let's just do something like this real quick. I'm going to add like a small little card here and then this. Oh, wait, what's a list group? Let's go to list group real quick. Okay, never mind. That's not what we want. So I'll say build card, and this will be a React component that is going to return that stuff. Here we have it. And this thing needs to take in a build title, which would probably be like this. And then build description. In fact, I don't need to even put like build. I'll just say description and title description here, just go ahead and say this. And description we would have stored in the back end. And then this could be a button called view build. And we should probably take the same stylings. At some point I want to abstract away to have like some shared common components, like a button. But let's go ahead and add some like some types to this. So I'll say this is a string description is a string. Save that. Um, I should probably make this an actual function and not a const. Um, and let's go ahead and see if we can use it instead of a table. I'm not a big fan of tables, like I said. So let's see if this looks any better. If I say a build card, the title can be build. We don't really have a title for the build, so we might need to go back and add something like that. And then also description could be... I don't know. I'm just, I'm just doing dumb stuff right now. 
go ahead and do that. We should probably pass in, you know, let's just pass in the whole build. Like, I don't know why I'm doing all this stuff. I'll pass in the whole build like that. And this thing will take in a build. And the build will be typed as build order. How about that? Then we'll have all the information we might need. So I'll say build ID for right now. This will be build dot style. And then we should see something display on the page at least. Okay. Um, let's just continue down this path. Like I think we could display the style here. Let's say style macro. We could probably also look at, there's something called like tags. I think they're called tags. Uh, maybe they're called badges. Yeah, this one looks pretty good. So we got different color badges based on the style of the, the, the play that you need to do. I'll just grab, um, I'll just grab a red one for right now, like that. And go ahead and make sure that that style is interpolated out there. So now if I go back to the app, it says macro. Okay, so that looks a little bit better. This thing we could probably bold it up. Like that. Probably even add some like, you know, actually do spaces like that. I'm going to add some display flex to this. So I'll say flex and then gap of four. To see if that'll space it out a little bit. That's a little bit too much. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to go back to the other create a build page because I think there's more information that like a user should really need to submit, like a description, um, maybe an author at some point. Like who was the original person who created the build? Was it Pig? Was it um, Harmst Har Harmstein? I don't know if I pronounced his name correctly. Um, was it Loco? So if I go to create build, like let's just add a couple of more things. And I know I'm jumping around, but honestly, like that's the way I code. So let's add in a input for the creator. I don't like how there's like empty class names on this. Let's just delete that real quick before this code just becomes more of a mess. This code's already pretty messy and I need to allocate time to start refactoring and abstract stuff away. Um, but let's just keep that ball rolling, right? So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And we're going to make one here for author. And I'm going to go ahead and just jump over to the Prisma scheme real quick. <laughs> you guys are probably so mad I'm jumping around. But author, I'm going to make this a string that's optional. I think you can do this to make it optional. Or is it this? This. The, the, op the author could be optional. Um, the title... I guess we could make it optional. You know, I'll make it required and I'll default it to untitled. Or unknown. Sounds more mysterious. So you have the author, you have the title, and then you have a description. Which is optional. I mean, you don't have to really describe the build, but it would be nice to. And then, um, again, once you change your schema, you got to go and run your migration scripts. So let's just run the migrate dev, adding author, title, and description to build. npm run dev. Go ahead and restart that dev server. So now we actually have like the data in the database that we can use soon. Okay. And we want to set up more fields to be able to kind of persist data. So we're trying to display the author here, which I don't even know where that was. Okay, we have style, we have build order, we have author. Don't think we need a 3 4 set onto that. Um, I'm going to rename some of this stuff. So build will be author, like that. Author, this, set build order, set author, will be that. Make sure we add some more state. So author, set author, and this will be an empty string for right now. Let's do the same thing for description, set description, and title. Now at this point, like this form is getting a little bit big. Like we could potentially have one state variable that holds the form state, and that might be a little bit cleaner. Um, and maybe we'll do that in a second, but let's just not worry about it. So where is the set author? We have set author, and then we're going to have set 
ahead and change all this stuff. And then again, we'll need another one for like, copy the wrong crap. Hold on, let's go back. Text area, text area. This needs to be an input, not a text area. We don't want like a whole text area for the author. And I put the author at the bottom. Okay, I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm doing so bad today. Uh, field set author, that looks good. This needs to be an input though. Okay, and the author is not required, so I'm gonna delete that. Go ahead and copy this. Go ahead and paste in a new one. It'll be title. We'll go ahead and rename or where it says author, it said title. <clears throat> and then lastly, we have description. This one should probably be a text area. I'll go here, that description, description, this, description. Um, probably don't need 400. I notice that we have this height that's hard coded to all these inputs. We don't want to do that. Uh, we just want to make it just be the default for an input. And let's refresh the page. Does this look pretty good? Pretty bad to me. Um, let's figure out, I think what we could do is the match style, the matchup in the style could be on one row. So where's the matchup in the style? Here. Um, I'm gonna make this in a section. I'm gonna group these together. Uh, shall I just do a div? I don't know if it needs to be a section or not, but I'm gonna go ahead and just say this will be a grid and grid calls two. I want those things to be side by side. And by those things, I mean the field set like that. Okay, so now those are side by side. Um, submitting a build order like should have some, some space between that and the top. I don't know why there's no space anymore. So I guess we could potentially just say padding top of 12. Space that down a little bit. And then for the author in the title, again, those could be on like author title description. Maybe we can put those all on one row. So we have like, yeah, actually I'll put those on two rows as well. So I will do this. And then title will be like this. And then we should probably add some gap between them. I don't know why the other one has gap, but this one doesn't. And then this one should probably be on its own row as well. Like that. And then build order this. Okay, you know what? I will not do that for the last one. I will make those be on separate ones, like so. And again, I don't know why it's like, why is this not taking up the full thing? Description should be with a full. Okay, let's try with the three fours. How about that? I wish I was better, better at styling in CSS. That's like the one thing I've always neglected. Um, because I'd much rather worry about the logic and stuff. But, I mean, I guess this looks okay. I'll do the same thing here. I think the description is a little high. I might do 140 pixels. How's that look? And then also is like some padding at the bottom of this main, I think would be beneficial. So at the bottom of this, I will say adding bottom 12. There. So the only thing that's required is the title. Well, the title's not even required either, right? None of this is required. But if I were to put this stuff in, uh oh, did you see that? I typed into title and update description. So I have a little an issue where I need to go and make sure that this is correctly mapped to description. Like that. So I will say author. I'll just say like Cody. Title is a bad build. Description. Do not do this build. 
quit game is the build order. That's the first. Supply one, quit the game. It's a cheese. Sounds good. In fact, it'd be supply 12, right? Because that's how many drones you start off with. I'm going to submit this. And let's go see if we can find that same build. I don't even know what play style that was. Um... Dang it. It defaults to ZBT, so I'm guessing that's what it was. Z, B, T. Okay, so let's see if we can get the titles displayed here instead of the ID. So let's go to the, the matchups page that we had. And instead of ID here, I'm going to say title. And they're all unknown. Why would they all be unknown? Oh, this thing's missing a key. Let's just go ahead and say build of ID could be our key. And let's just add another build because... Well, that's kind of weird. It crashes when I do that. Let me go back to the main page. I'm going to create a build. I'll do PBT, cheese, Cody, bad build, bad, bad. Submit this form. And that was PVT. So let's find the build. Protoss versus Protoss. Um, you know what? I probably am not like setting something correctly. Yeah, I forgot to send those things over. So let's go back to our create build and we need to make sure we update this stuff because I forgot. So we need author is a required string. Title is a, a string. Now technically this could be nullish. It could be null. We like they don't have to send in a title or an author. Um, and then description, z string, nullish. I think those are the things we did. I want to make sure. Author is optional. Description is optional. Titles defaulted. So now to create these things, I'm going to pass in author input dot author title description. String null or undefined is not assignable to string undefined. But I think title actually has to be like nullable. Is that how you do it? Mm. Is there a different one that allows like undefined? Zod allow empty input. This is saying optional. Is that how you do it? Okay, that's how you do it. Optional instead of nullish. So I wonder if I should actually put these as nullish. I mean optional instead of nullish. Will that complain if I do that? I don't know what the proper way to not do it is, but I think they're both pretty similar. It's just like a TypeScript reference, I think. One will make it a string or undefined. One will make it a string or null. And I don't know if Prisma will allow undefines or not. I guess we'll find out. But anyway, we updated the back end. Now the front end, for some reason, we forgot to pass in the title. We forgot to pass in the description. And we also forgot to pass in the author. So let's make sure we send that stuff over so that when we actually create these build orders that have all that data. And this is where when I do a hard refresh on the page, it fails on uh, race name. I don't know why, because it should be defined. It's right here, Protoss. Matchup against Protoss. So that's just another bug we got to look into. I'll just go ahead and say to-dos. I'm going to add a bug section bugs refreshing the page refreshing the matchup page crashes probably a super easy fix i just don't want to look into it right now i'm trying to stay focused so let's go back here i'm going to go to submit a new build i'm going to say zvt author is cody build 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 so find a build zvt and here we have it. That's the uh, title that we used.
Now again, I don't, I need to add like on this thing here, whatever this parent main is, I think we want to get this a width of like full or something. So let's go to main. I guess it's this one. We don't care about displaying a table anymore. So let's get rid of this whole table thing. I don't even know why I'm doing a table there at this point. Like that, like that. And we probably want like four or five columns. So I'll just make like a, a section here. And I'll say class name is equal to grid, grid falls four or five. Maybe four is enough. And we can say gap of four. Yeah, that looks, I don't know if that's actually enough for all the builds to display. Like if a title is really long on a build, let's just use one of these as an example. Let's go back and create a build. DVT, Bob, Daggett. Testing. It's always good to have like real test data because you'll see like what happens when you try to render this out to the page and you don't truncate stuff. So VVT. I mean, it doesn't look too bad. That was a cheese. We should probably also put the, um, what were the other things we're storing? On the build we have, let's go to the scheme. I already forgotten. Title, description, author. Let's try to display those things. The title. Um, this could be the description, which I'll actually add in a new paragraph tag here. I'll say description. And we don't need to put that in an actual like tag. So I'll just put it in a paragraph. And we should probably limit how many characters we have. I think you can say substring one and I'll say like 50. How about that? And then I'll just append uh, with a dot, dot, dot or something. Or do 100 and then I'll just append it with dot, dot, dot. And let's see what happens. That looks okay. <clears throat> now, obviously, like I think having four is just too, too many. Like I think we should reduce it to three. So let's go back to the grids. I'm going to say give it three. Um, and then we also want to display the author. I'll do something like this. The author creator. And this will be author. We have the title, the description, the style, the author. And then I think that's it. We don't care about the build. You can see that on the next page. Instead of it being in a thing, I'll just say like created by, created by uh, author. Cool. Um, how's that look? So this is how it would look like if we had like an actual like real stuff filled out. The most important thing is title, description, and then the style could be called like a cheese. And then if you click view build, that should take you to a new page where you can actually view the full on build, which we haven't done yet, but I think this is probably good enough. We added a decent amount of functionality right now. And next video, what I might do is just come back and delete all this data, start fresh, see what the app looks like with no data in it. Because I bet you if there's no data, this will just be a blank page and it'll be pretty ugly to look at. Also, we probably want some padding on the edge of the page here. So like, let's go back and I'm just going to say padding left of four, padding right of four. You can also say padding of X. So I can say like, um, let me not put it on the wrong thing. Like I keep doing, I could say PX four and that should add a little bit of padding over here. So it's not so like bunched up. And, um, yeah, it'd probably be cool to add like icons here so like the zerg icon a cool like versus image and then a terran icon i don't know just keep on adding to this home page could use some love this whole race select not a fan of it i had an idea of basically keep you on one page and you could have zerg and then underneath that protoss terran and then versus in the middle zerg protoss terran you basically select one it grays it out or it like highlights it you select this one over here and then it takes you to the next page. 
I don't know. Might just try playing around with some stuff. But yeah, we added a little bit of features. Hope you guys enjoyed watching along. I'll go ahead and just submit some of the stuff. So I'll say like adding more metadata to the builds and displaying it. And I didn't add all the files, so that was a dumb commit. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just get that last description. I'm going to go ahead and commit with the exact same description. If you're a pro with Git, what you could do is actually like do a commit and rebase it and squash it, or you could like append to the last one. But it seems, why is it frozen here? Oh, it opened up. Please enter the commit message. Why did it open this up? I don't know what I did. Usually I don't even use this, uh, the git tool on the left. Usually I use the command line, so hopefully I didn't mess anything up. Seems like it's okay. Let's just look at the app real quick. Make sure I didn't break anything. Seems good. This app could definitely use some more love, but I think it's a good, good pro progress since the last video. All right, have a good day and happy coding.